Today, we are going to be discussing Destiny 2's third expansion, slotted to be the largest expansion so far, similar to The Taken King in Destiny 1, but will it also have the largest price tag? Or will Bungie follow suit with other games releasing around the same time and include a vastly different style of DLC delivery? That's the topic for today's video, so let's get started. What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we are going to be discussing future DLC for Destiny 2 and the really interesting position Destiny 2 and gaming in general is in right now in terms of DLC expansions and so on. Because we're seeing the landscape change and shift so much even recently. I mean, Destiny 2 just had a new expansion with Warmind. It was a $20 expansion. Now that, in terms of just sheer content added, really wasn't a terrible expansion. I mean, there's Fortnite skins that are $20. In terms of an expansion that adds a new campaign, new weapons, escalation protocol, all this stuff, and a skin, obviously your value for money is better with Warmind. That's undeniable, but of course, Fortnite's completely free to play, and that's something that absolutely should enter the equation. So it's not that simple as saying one is equivalent to the price of the other. And what we've seen over the past few years in gaming is just a huge influx of microtransactions. Now this, for a lot of people, is not a good thing. However, during that same period, and especially more recently, we've seen games embrace their microtransactions model and at the same time offer incredible value to the consumer by being completely free to play. Games like Fortnite, and Fortnite is really the big example right now, it's making a lot of other games and other companies look at it as an example of a free to play game that is raking in money. But previously to that, we have League of Legends, we have Warframe, we have Path of Exile, we have very polished, very fun games that could easily come out and actually have a $40, $60 price tag and be worth the money, but they're completely free to play and they're funded by microtransactions. So I think a lot of people are very okay with that. They're okay with having microtransactions in the game if the game itself at a baseline is totally free. We see that with Fortnite very obviously. The problem we've had with AAA games, like Destiny, like Destiny 2, like Call of Duty and Battlefield up to this point, is that they want it all. It's a $60 game, and on top of that, there's an expansion pass usually with multiple DLCs that you have to pay for, and on top of that, there's also microtransactions within the game. Again, Destiny 2 did this, Destiny did this, Call of Duty World War II did this recently, but this model is extremely outdated and people are just not putting up with it. Why would you buy a game that's just infested with ways to rake every cent out of you when you could play Fortnite, which is completely free to play, right? People are more often than not making the latter choice. And we're again seeing game companies recognize this and start to adapt. This is why we're talking about the future expansion of Destiny 2, and this is why it's very relevant for Destiny 2, because the competition is taking notice. First off, you have Battlefield 5. Now, there is a little bit of a controversy with people saying, I don't know how authentic British women with face paints with prosthetic arms wielding cricket bats were in World War II battlefields, and then others, of course, wanting the customization. That is a whole different topic, Something that isn't controversial and something that regardless of your position on that all Battlefield players have rejoiced about is that there's no premium pass with Battlefield 5. All of the DLC is completely free. In fact, DICE felt this was so important that they made this announcement part of the reveal of the game. So they're revealing the game for the first time to the world and it's such an important factor, the post-game launch is such an important factor that they're talking about this during this reveal. They're talking about post-launch support and the fact that it's all free content and they don't want to split the player base up and all of this stuff. 
Again, that shows you how big of an emphasis this is in people's minds when they're choosing to buy a game. You're not just buying a game for a few hours of fun anymore, you're buying a game as an investment of your time, and you want your time and money to be respected. This isn't the only big competitor doing this, however. Black Ops 4 also recently got announced, and although they didn't go into their post-launch DLC model, a lot of people noticed that there is zero Seasons Pass available to pre-order with Black Ops 4. And this is the first time since Seasons Passes were introduced into the Call of Duty franchise that this was the case. Every other time a game, a Call of Duty game, was announced, it was always available to buy for the special edition which came with the Seasons Pass every single time. So the fact that Black Ops 4 doesn't have a Seasons Pass available to purchase, a lot of people are saying, well, this is pretty clear. Black Ops 4 is also going the way of Battlefield 5 in the sense that it's going to provide free content to keep the player base together, to respect people's time and money, and they're funding the post-launch support via the microtransactions they're going to have in the game anyways. And generally, I think a lot of players prefer this. I know people don't like loot boxes and don't like microtransactions, and frankly, neither do I really, but I'm willing to have some Call of Duty loot boxes in the game and have free DLC because of that. Heck, they're already in the game, they're not going anywhere. It's ridiculous that in World War II especially, that's rife with loot boxes, they still want to charge you for the DLC. So making the DLC free, I think a lot of people would be more accepting of the loot boxes. Again, it's not a perfect solution, don't get me wrong, but it's undoubtedly a step in the right direction, and it's certainly better than having all three things with the paid game, paid DLCs, and microtransactions. So how does Destiny 2 come into the mix? I've been talking about a lot of other games so far. Well, that's kind of the point. September is going to be when Destiny 2 launches DLC 3. We know this for a fact. And again, we know based on evidence, based on Bungie accidentally admitting it's going to be a comet expansion, which generally means for them that's a larger size expansion, that it's going to be very hard for Bungie and Destiny 2 to justify a $40 expansion in a game that's not doing so well. Even though I think Warmind was more of a positive than a negative, certainly, and much better than Curse of Osiris, Destiny 2 is undoubtedly still struggling. It has a lot of work to do to gain the player base back. So a struggling game that wants to charge another $40 for a large expansion that undoubtedly is going to promise to fix everything, but at the same time where its competitors with Battlefield and Call of Duty are offering completely free post-launch DLC, that's a hard pill to swallow. And therefore, it may actually turn out that Bungie can't justify this. That a $40 expansion just won't fly. They do the market research, they do some surveys and realize, wow, no one's gonna buy this expansion. Because you're not just trying to please your player base. The thing about Destiny 2 is that the player base is already gone. You're trying to get your player base back and you're not gonna do so, or at least it's gonna be very hard to convince them, hey, come back to this game that you left because of its problems we fixed its problems, but you've got to trust us and give us $40. I, I really don't see that working very often. And therefore, I really don't think it's that ridiculous to imagine that Bungie may make this next expansion, may make expansion 3 completely free. Because it already has Eververse, it already has in-game microtransactions enabled. And they could frankly ramp up Eververse a little bit if they did make this DLC free and future DLCs after that even free. I think people would be okay with stuff like the Iron Banner emote that just happened if we were getting free expansions. Free expansions would also undoubtedly help in the goal of gaining the player base back. It's very easy to convince someone to come back and try the new, improved, fixed Destiny 2 if, hey, just reinstall, man. The, the DLC is free. Just, just install it, right? That is a very easy pill to swallow. However, there is a hurdle to this whole possibility, and that is the fact that Bungie is splitting up the content for this next DLC between all players and paying players. 
And we also saw this with Warmind, where a lot of the changes that are fixing the fundamentals of the game are applied to the Destiny roadmap and are given to all players, right? The exotic buffs were not just for paying players, they were for all players. And on the roadmap, and again, this roadmap applies to all players, it's not DLC specific things, like you don't have to pay for anything on the roadmap, we are getting gear sets, we are getting random rolls, we are getting a new weapon system, all of that stuff. So that may be Bungie's approach there, is to apply these fixes at a base level to the game, but also try to offer something in terms of content that you still have to pay for. But with that being said, it's going to be hard to justify a $40 Taken King style expansion when a lot of those fundamental changes are free, right? The Taken King originally, it also redid the weapon system. People forget about this, but the Taken King introduced the foundries, right? It introduced Omelon, Hakka, and Suros, and all of those foundries, the weapons they provided had unique perk layouts. So it did kind of what Destiny 2 is looking to do as well, which is change the weapon system. However, with Taken King, access to this new weapon system, you still had to pay for. And that's a very big factor. It doesn't look as impressive of a package if you were to offer that to all players. And with that consideration, it's another possibility that even though this will be a somewhat larger expansion, a Taken King style of expansion, that Bungie realizes that they don't have the same package to offer paying players, and therefore they just charge another $20. We don't have a kind of ridiculous $40 charge like we did with the Taken King, and that would be another huge departure from the Destiny 1 model. However, with all of that being said, I feel like a departure of the Destiny 1 model is exactly what we need. This is not Destiny 1. This is nowhere near the same position that Destiny 1 was in. So trying to follow that model exactly is going to end in disaster. Bungie is going to have to take notice of its competition and charging another premium price for an expansion that just fixes the problems in the game that should never have occurred. Again, that's something that isn't going to excite a lot of players. And therefore, I think it's very possible that we do see a radical departure in what we're used to in terms of DLC pricing. Making DLC 3 free is not so outlandish. And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this discussion interesting, and I hope that Bungie does take notice about what is going on in gaming, what their competitors are doing, and realize that this is a very old school style of approach when it comes to DLC pricing, and this is not gonna hold up, especially with the state of the game right now. Guys, if you wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked to the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.